Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for more Ted Lasso. We are finally moving on into season two, and I can't wait to just dive right back into this, man, to see where we are at after the last episode, after season one's finale with the team being dropped out of the Premier League and now having to work there and claw their way back up. I don't know. It was just a really strong, despite the loss, despite all of that, it was a very strong and powerful lesson in perseverance and hope and just, again, another amazing feel-good episode. And I'm excited to see the team just better themselves, move forward, and make it their way back because we know they're going to. I hope everybody had a safe and happy holiday for you guys that celebrated yesterday. And with that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into this. If you want to see the full-length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you've got a member of the channel, get you access as well. It is in watch-along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes and reaction to the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies we react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind-the-scenes footage to try to make it worth your while. So you try to always support the channel. But guys, in the end of the day, really appreciate if you enjoy this reaction, at least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already, because it really helps these videos out. With that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode one. Here we go. AFC Richmond and Nottingham Forest are level with two goals apiece. Obi Sanya switches play. He finds Rojas, who has room. Look at us starting off with Coach Nate. Richmond has started the season with seven Oh, damn. Ties. We're seven straight ties? What? Chris, can you even imagine starting a season with seven consecutive draws? I sure can, Arlo. But that's because I'm a right brain dominant with a knack for make believe. <laughs> and a hush falls over Nelson Road. With the exception of Richmond. I swear if that pigeon blocks this kick. Will Danny Rojas deliver the good boy their first win of the season? Because there's no way Danny, from what we've seen, would miss without a real good goalie. Football is life. Football is life, man. Let's go! Look at it. Let CGI freaking pigeon. Yeah, or is he gonna hit the dog? Is the dog gonna chase the pigeon? Oh, what is gonna happen? That's not what I wished for. <laughs> would that count? Would you get a would you get another kick? You'd get another kick, right? That's some bullshit if you didn't. I swear I thought it was gonna be the pigeon, man. I've seen that shit happen in a baseball game. Someone beamed a pitch and a bird just intercepted it right before it got to the batter and it just exploded into freaking feathers, man. Oh God, did we really make Michael Jordan cry? Mm. Did you write a statement for Ted? Yeah, I did. Then he said, now don't you fret, Bubba Fett. And how many more matches you think can end in a draw before you- That impression. Well, Marcus, there's two buttons I never like to hit. All right, and that's panic and snooze. <laughs> Trent's grim. Yeah. Mm. I was wondering if you had any comments on Earl, the dog Danny Rojas killed today. He killed it. Oh, I mean, God, hmm. Well, when I was three years old, I got attacked by our neighbor's dog. I don't remember it happening, but my mother said it was pretty, pretty scary. I do remember being afraid of dogs while growing up, though. Like if I was at a friend's house for a sleepover or something, they'd have to keep their family dog outside, otherwise I'd bawl my eyes out. <laughs> then in high school, our neighbor, Mr. Grady, well, his, his wife passed away, and he was real sad about that, if you can imagine. And he just, kind of stopped taking care of their dog. Same one that bit me. And so I started looking after him, you know, feeding him, taking him on walks, playing fetch, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Mr. Grady's son moved his dad into a nursing home and he asked if I wanted to keep Hank. And I was like, yeah, heck yeah. And then a year or so after that, we had to put Hank to sleep. It's funny to think about the things in your life that can make you cry, just knowing that they existed can then become the same thing that make you cry knowing that they're now gone. Those things come into our lives to help us get from one place to a better one. And I hope we helped Earl do just that. But we're going to miss him around here a whole bunch. And how's Danny doing? I haven't spoken with him yet, but I just hope he's not being too hard on himself, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, thank fucking Christ, I needed that. 
Oh my god. Oh, that was way too soon for me. But it was still so, such a sweet little moment. Watching the death of me. I recommend you use a little soap. Helps get the eternal rest out of those tough to reach places, you know. Good idea. Cool. Don't forget, football is life, right? Football is death. It used to be. Oh no. I was joking. Go ahead and give Dan a little bit of space right now, yeah? Y'all don't mind showering at home, do you? If it's okay with you, some of us prefer to take long baths at home. Yeah, no, okay, that'll work too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Goldfish? By means to forget our mistakes and failures and just move on. But I didn't make any mistakes. Only you played poorly. Oh, fuck oh, you! <laughs> hey guys, Jan Mas is not being rude. He's just being Dutch. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> what? Ah. Uh. Oh. I'm telling you, mm. all these ties are my fault. The team's playing well, Ted. Just a little unlucky. Back home, if a team was playing poorly, we don't call them unlucky. What do we call them, Coach? New York Jets. There it is. Hey, uh, Coach. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can I leave a little early today? But part of your job is to stay until the whole team's gone. No. Yes, of course. It's just it's my mum's fiftieth birthday. Oh. Oh, and what, what position does your mum play on the team again? It's okay, Will. Uh, <laughs> tell your mom a happy birthday from all of us. And hey, if she ever wants to try out for the team, she's more than welcome. You, you gotta stay on them. Mm. Pressure makes pearls, right? Mm. Wait, that's right. Uh, nope, that, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh, Whoops. You mess it up, you were just, uh... Unlucky. Yes. Mm. Nice. Way to bring that back around. We just received a giant food delivery from our rivals over at Brentford FC. That's nice. What kind of food? Thai. Oh my god. Though that sounds real good right now. Look on the bright side, Ted. We are still undefeated. That is that is true. Danny's a lot like an expensive tape measure. He snaps back real quick. <laughs> Where does he come up with these things, man? We are now looking at the very new, very generous, very guilt-riddled benefactor of Richmond's largest dog shelter. Barking and Palace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> that Dad. is a good name. Girl. Oh. oh, I should go. I promised the boys would watch Empire Strikes Back tonight, and I have to get my thoughts together for when they ask about Luke and Leia making out. <laughs> hey, coming back to that. Don't don't kiss your sister. And also with you. Aww. And it's nothing personal. It's just that he's been so busy with this new coaching gig. You listen to me. You play. What's he coaching? Is he coaching kids? Because today, you will play like a bunch of little pricks. Please. Yes. Wait to put your body on the line out there. You know it, coach. Oh. Oh. Rebecca wanted to see if we could do some double date action next week. Fucking hell. Bad word, Uncle Roy. You owe me one quick. Put on my tab. Come on, it'll be fun. She actually keeping a tab? I think she is. She brought out a notebook. See, we have the match today. I got a red card for elbowing a girl in her neck. And I'm very proud. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not hockey, but. Do you ever want anything more than sitting in child's pose? Getting buzzed on rose, gossiping about reality TV with a bunch of women that know nothing about you? No. <laughs> I love it. Sky Sports reached out again. No. I think it's a good idea. Last time I did one of your good ideas, I made a fucking fool of myself. You're she made another note. People loved it. It got like 15 million views. Wait, so your way of alleviating my embarrassment is to tell me how many millions of people have seen me look like a knob. <laughs> Good point. I just want to go on record saying that I think you'd be an amazing pundit. It's a shit job for shit people. I'd rather shit out of my own fucking mouth than do that fucking shit. Oh, uh, I think she lost track. There's no Where way. Where are we at now? 1,200. Oh my God. Years. Impressive. And it's deja Makes sense. It is Roy. Three to three. What the? What is this curse? To put Richmond in the win column for the Who are you going to kill today, buddy? If he can get it past this adorable. Oh my God. Are you serious? Oh, gamesmanship from the keeper. How will Rojas oh. respond? <laughs> Oh! Football is dead! Wait, 
you with you? What? But he said the thing. He said the thing I said. More balls. Oh, I did. Yikes. I haven't seen someone that disappointed to see me since I wore a red baseball cap to a Planned Parenthood fundraiser. Sorry, Ted. You're right. I, I was just hoping you were Keely. That's okay. I wish I was Keely three, four times a day. There you go. Thank you. Let me guess. You got a fever for the flavor little girl talk, don't you? Why don't you let me take it? Oh, my God. Yeah, Rule number one. Even though it's called girl talk, sometimes it needs to be more like girl. Listen. Got it. Learn on the fly here. Come on, hit me. Mm. All right. Thank you. It's very handsome. Mm -hmm. um, successful nice not shy mm, is he nice to you uh yes good no yeah, sounds great so i'm confused is there a problem here or something actually i suppose not okay so rule number two is sometimes girl talk can just be blabbing away about stuff and nothing has to really change and no one has to solve anything yeah, that's exactly right <laughs> i mean sometimes just hearing something out loud like can like make your your doubts and fears feel inconsequential so like I don't know. Sometimes verbalizing it's all you really need. We got a situation, coach. He's underselling. We have a Shakespearean fucking tragedy. <laughs> oh, How many has he missed? All of them. Wow. We're watching the end of someone's career. Not now, Jan. Don't be Dutch right now. What happened between you and Earl? That wasn't your fault. It was that damn pigeon. It's a tragic occurrence. One time thing. So let's get away from the bad. I swear if he murders something else. I mean, you'd say that too about having eight ties in a row. All right, Danny. Okay, coach. Take a deep breath. Oh, he's gonna take it right to the back of the head. Be the ball, Danny. Oh my God. Ugh. Okay, it was right in the ass. Okay. I've taken a fucking uh, soccer ball to the head. It's not fun. Also a basketball. <laughs> Any ideas? Danny needs motivation. We could always just show him his goddamn paycheck. Nate's been a little bit in a mood this season so far. Hey, you're not supposed to say that out loud. Which is why I wrote it down. The yips. Shh. What are the yips? Shh. Are you kidding me, you two? <laughs> it's like saying Macbeth in a theater or Voldemort at Hogwarts or uh, soccer in England. Bingo. <laughs> Sometimes being here is like living in a foreign country. You ever feel that way? <laughs> some therapy. General apprehension and a modest Midwestern skepticism. Why do you ask? <laughs> I would not have thought that of Ted, but all his uh, his explanations do track as well. But who cares about Martin Short when you're sitting next to? He's here. He's a. He's every fucking way. Roy Kent. Roy Kent. <laughs> Your life must be. Hard. You must miss it all like mad, yeah. I don't. So what are you doing now then? Oh, you know. Busy, busy. Must coaching it. Coaching at the moment. I hadn't heard that. Fantastic. Yeah. We've got a cup final next week. October. What, what cup's that? West London under nine girls. No. Can I get another one, please? <laughs> Sky's supposed to be a pundit. You'd be amazing at that job. I love that idea. Just let him, let him do what he's comfortable doing. It's the first time my father's forwarded me an email in the last five years that wasn't about the scourge of immigration. And that really <laughs> meant a lot to me, so thank you. Cheers. <laughs> It must be super weird afterwards, though, right? I'm going to need two more of these, please. Jesus. Him and his owner, Nigel, used to come in here all the time till he started shitting and pissing all over the place. Yeah, well, that's pretty common with older dogs. No, I'm talking about Nigel. To Earl. He was a good boy. No. Can I get real a second? Get my meal a second? Put down your beer and tell your buddy how you feel a second? <laughs> I think there's part of me that just doesn't, uh, I don't know, uh, trust therapists now come well when michelle and i did couples therapy i just kind of felt like i was being set up like i was going in there not to be listened to but rather just to hear about all the things i've been doing wrong no there are therapists that do shit like that even therapists that completely disregard your problems altogether a good one is real hard to come by around here in in these neck of the woods well i think it's a really good match totally fucking hell tell the truth he's fine that's it. There's nothing wrong with that. Most people are fine. It's not about him. It's about why the fuck you think he deserves you. Oh, wow. You have someone that makes you feel like you've been struck by fucking lightning. Don't you dare settle for fine. <laughs> wow. Not that it's any of my business. No. <laughs> So I understand that Danny has developed a case of the yips. <laughs> well, Doc, we don't like using that word around here. Why? Superstition. I, I mean, he's the one knows everything. Okay, all right. Um, mm. 
They are a mental condition, one that can be fixed with discipline, not denial. So then you're pretty confident that you can help us out with Danny, huh? Are you good at your job? Oh, God damn that. it. Put all bullshit humility aside and be honest with me. Are you good at your job, yes or no? Yes! Um, yes. Well, as good as you are at your job, I'm twice as good at mine. Want me to stick around, help you break the ice with Danny here? I think we'll be all right, Coach Lasso, thank you. Okay, yeah. Te sentirías más cómodo si hablo en español, Danny? Oh, no. Is everything okay, Rebecca? No, my friend Flo once told me that intimacy was all about leaving yourself open to being attacked. Isn't that horrible? It does make you realize how scary it is. That's vulnerability. I need to be brave enough to let someone wonderful love me. Without fear of being hurt. So, are you breaking up with me? I'm so sorry. I, I actually didn't know I was going to no, do no, that. No, no, sorry. Mm, awkward, but good for her. Danny Rojas, Rojas, Danny Rojas. She don't wave back. Oh, I don't think she saw me. She saw you. Mm. <laughs> Well, damn! Yeah, I mean, what it ended up helping you? Dr. Sharon helped me remember that even though football is life, football is also death, and that football is football too. But mostly that football is life. What? <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna go upstairs, thank the good doc before she splits it. He's gonna be going to therapy by the end of this. Thank you, Sharon. For real. You're welcome. Donc, chante tu vu venir du Québec? C'est bien ça? Vous parlez français? A few of the boys asked to sit down with Dr. Fieldston before she left. I don't see the harm, right? No, that, that's great. Yeah. No. Yeah, but you can beg for forgiveness later. I'll swing by and wake you up. Oi! Roy! Hurry up, it's about to start! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be awake. Have fun, yeah? Aww. Right. They're cute. Let's fucking do this. Jamie. No. And the island's top scorer. Sexually. Oh shit. Damn. I wasn't expecting this to end, man. My god, this was a really interesting episode. A really interesting kickoff to the season with his like tie curse. Eight straight ties. What are the odds of that? The universal like components that would come together in a football game to like make that possible and then on top of that this situation with earl which again like god the 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 speech about that ted gave like hit so close to home man especially just after i mean what it's all, it's not even been a month yet i don't think since uh we had to put down poppy that was that hurt but it was also sweet in the end you know like the sentiment is there and that kind of pulled me out of it and then obviously danny's downward spiral but i'm very curious what the trajectory is to, is with Ted and this therapist. You know, he, obviously he's expressed his thoughts and his experiences with therapy. And while there are therapists that are very much like that, then this very same one came in here and put it on him. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Does Ted need therapy at the end of the day? Maybe, maybe deflection. Like with these superstitions, he's not addressing head on the problems in his marriage, maybe even the problems in his life, maybe in the, the problems that he brings to the table he's not even aware of. I don't know. I really don't know. I also, I don't, I don't like her approach. She's very rude. I, I understand the standoffishness that the, that our guys have our, uh, with her coming in and the ways she was treating them. But I don't know. Maybe she sees something to smell something that we're not, I'm not picking up on just yet. Beard throughout is like, is it jealousy? That you're feeling is that part of the problem and he denied it but it does seem that he feels like it it, it is problem it is becoming problematic for him seeing his players bypass him that's been his role he doesn't know the game he's the life coach he's the person here to make them better people he found himself in a situation where he can't do that or he hit a roadblock or a topic or a thing that he wasn't able to really help with don't know why but it seems to be the route we're going right now, at least. So I'm not sure where that's going to take us. But it's definitely 
especially with that shot of the door being shut on him, that's him being shut out of these conversations. His team is no longer gonna be sharing and opening up with him or even seeing him as a reliable source to go to. That is detrimental to like the pull, the power, the weight that he brings to everything. So like, it's, it's just like, my God, like, I mean, that's quite the opposite of everything in the first season, man. He was, he was on top of all of it. It really does feel like I'm kind of like Ted right now. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why not? Why is this not working? <laughs> then, uh, Beck's getting out into the world and, uh, dating again, finding a guy who she's comfortable around, but it's that comfortability. She's comfortable around. She's not being vulnerable. I like that Roy of all people saw the value in that. Again, I think that goes to show like the strength of him and Keeley's relationship. You know, he's like you he mentioned before, he's, he's been around, he's dated around, you know, he's a star, you know, he's, he gets attention, he gets ladies, but there was something different about his approach with Keeley and like with Rebecca, he's like, he acknowledged just how great a woman she is and that, yeah, this guy, he's fine. He's safe, all this kind of stuff but she could do better and deserves better. It was a nice little sweet sentiment that came from Roy that I, I just didn't expect and it just made it that much more intense and powerful. I loved that whole little bit. I like that he was like, Keely, why are you even lying to her? You guys, shit, stop it. And then when they were on their next date, like she was observing other couples doing very different things. We saw two not interacting at all on their phones, two being very intimate, and then one woman just completely by herself. And then she just opened her up and made her reflect upon dating itself and in turn, that led her to cutting ties with this man. And I'm hoping, hoping maybe this will lead her towards Ted. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I mean, you brought that up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know trajectories or anything like that, but I, 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 I would like to see that. But Roy right now has this uncomfortability with his current relationship with football because you know, he's not playing anymore, but he's coaching. Like he's still involved with it and he needs to be and wants to be. Keeley's trying to push him into being a pundit to talk about the game and I assume commentate, give thoughts on performances and stuff like that. Kind of like those round table discussions they have on ESPN. Or, that's my un understanding of what of what she's implying there. Again, I'm not a huge sports person, but I, I assume that's what she m meant by that. And he's not too comfortable with that idea but kind of just like with the advice that he gave to Rebecca, you know, he could do more too if you wanted, but it's all about timing. It's all about when he's ready because this is a very sensitive subject for him. I mean, it also is for her, but it's that vulnerability, that fear of the attack, that feeling of openness when you enter into a relationship and into a dynamic with someone new and you got to build that trust and you have to be open to do it if you try to enter it with your walls up. It's never going to really be authentic, at least until you get to that point where the walls can come down. But sometimes you don't make it to that point if you go in completely guarded. Like, it's a very interesting dynamic. And I like her deconstruction of that because it relates kind of to Roy and his current relationship with football. You no, know, maybe he's settling for the youth league, but because it's safe, it's comfortable, and it's easy at the moment. But then, even in his yoga nights with the, the ladies watching that reality show jamie shows up again it's like he can't get away from it so i'm i'm curious to see what his trajectory is going to be i was hoping he'd be like nate or somebody like be just a consultant or an, an additional coach for them like i said I, he's got knowledge that's very invaluable and maybe that's i don't know i don't know i have no idea we got a weird definitely change of pace start to this season that really kind of threw me for a loop and I, I don't know what to expect right now, which is good, which is good because the show's gonna keep me on my toes and challenge me along the way. So let's go. But guys, I think that's all I got for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to you guys. How do you all feel about this episode? Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or forget Maryland's channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Karen, your course gone, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hill, Jake and Cheryl, Eric Official, Casey Wood, and JoJo. Thank you guys so much for continued support. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.